Today we're going to show you how to build a DIY teleprompter that will let you read out a script while you're looking right at the camera. Guys, believe it or not, almost everything that we've said on this channel has been without the use of a teleprompter. Some of you may be surprised to learn that because in my first videos, I was awkwardly staring straight at the camera, rarely blinking or interacting with my surroundings. It was a struggle for a while. I like to think I've gotten better and don't need to do that anymore. However, we are gonna show you how to build a teleprompter because they can be very useful. Here's the basic idea. Using foam core, hot glue, and a sheet of acrylic, we can help you make a teleprompter that will fit to your camera and smartphone. So guys, a lot of YouTubers and a lot of people on TV use teleprompters. They're incredibly useful. They make it really easy. If you have a lot of bullet points you've got to hit really fast, well, you've got to memorize that unless you have a teleprompter. Teleprompters aren't for every situation. If you're acting on stage or screen, something like that, then you can't be looking right at the camera, which is where the cues are usually gonna be scrolling. But for anything where you're really trying to just focus on the camera itself, maybe vlogging or showing a DIY video that has a lot to say, it can really save a lot of time so you don't have to just sit and memorize lines forever. The supplies you'll need to build this are actually very simple. We've got a sheet of acrylic. This is an eight by 10 sheet I picked up at the hardware store for like less than four bucks. We've got a sheet of craft foam. This stuff comes from Hobby Lobby, costs about $1.50. This is the thickest stuff they have. You could get something a little bit thinner, but I like it with the thicker version. We have a hot glue gun. Pretty much any hot glue gun is gonna work. And then we also have foam core. This is the stuff that's paper on the outsides in like a styrofoam middle. We've got a clicking razor blade. Very useful because if it starts to get too dull, you can just break the tip off and keep using the rest of it. Pencil, it's good for marking things. And this piece of paper, which we're actually just going to fold and use as a 45 degree angle guide. The other things you're gonna need are a camera to film with and a smartphone to run the teleprompter app. This app that I'm using is the Parrot Teleprompter app. The Parrot Teleprompter is a commercially available version of what we're building today. It's a bit more sturdy than what we are going to build today, but it costs quite a bit more as well. The app, however, is free, so that's what we're gonna be using with our DIY version. Before we started this build, I reached out to a friend of mine named Brigham, who actually invented the Parrot Teleprompter, and I asked him some questions about his design and invention process so we could know what we were getting into. So the design itself is actually deceptively simple, but there are some few basic things that you really wanna keep in mind when you're building one of these to make it actually flawless. One of those things is the angle of your acrylic to make sure that everything is actually lining up correctly. The other thing that you really need to take into account is the vignette. You don't want your camera lens to catch the side of the box of the teleprompter itself. We're going to want to build this custom to our camera and our phone. Every phone's gonna be different. A lot of cameras are gonna be different. You can see this right here is the camera that our cameraman Mark usually uses. He's currently using our emergency backup camera so we can see his primary camera. And so we have to build onto this so that it all works smoothly. So to start off, we're just gonna cut some four inch strips of our foam core. That's a large enough size that we can cut it down to what we need, but we won't end up with any pieces that are too small. The first piece that we're gonna to wanna to cut out of these that's actually gonna be part of the body of the teleprompter is gonna be the pieces that hold our phone. This is gonna be the basic idea here is we're just gonna have a slit, a rectangular hole cut into this that our phone fits in nicely and that's gonna hold it in place and just generally do everything we want to in terms of keeping our hardware where we need it. Aha, I measured correctly. That's actually quite <laughs> snug. As you can see, it's not falling out like that. That's a pretty good thing. I'm gonna trim this. I'm gonna give myself too much space here. It's not gonna be this tall. This is just moving on. And now we need to build another one exactly like that. Got our two pieces that hold the phone. However, with my particular phone, I have the camera that sticks out. It's, it's not quite flush with the rest of the phone body. And I want it to fit just right. So I'm actually gonna cut that notch out as well. And I'll show you why. So you can see here the width that the teleprompter text runs at, and we want to encase it at about that width. And so we want this side to get in a little bit closer, but right now it's bumping into my camera, so I need to cut a notch so it doesn't do that. All right, how did I do? Nice. So obviously we're gonna cut these down to size, but the next step is gonna to be to cut some 45 degree angle slits into the side. That's gonna be what holds our acrylic piece in place. Piece of paper folded across. 
across diagonally should give us a perfect 45 degree angle. Here is where we're going to want our piece of acrylic. We've got the piece of paper and I'm just gonna set that right onto the screen of the phone. And then this line, when we can mark. Same thing on the other side. We've got our 45 degree angle lines and now we need to cut out a small slot, the same thickness as our acrylic sheet. We had the lines drawn longer than they needed to be. We don't need to have this extend all the way down off of the foam core. We're gonna have it stop right here a little bit above the height of the phone. We can see that it's maybe five millimeters above the height of the phone screen. And on the other end, it doesn't need to extend all the way to the end of the phone screen either. So we're just gonna cut it off right about here and all of the light from the phone will be shining up this direction. This is actually an interesting demonstration right here about how exactly a teleprompter works. So our camera will be filming this direction. So we'll have the lens of the camera will be about right here, filming out here. This is where the person being filmed is. Phone screen is down here, pointing up. The acrylic is reflective, but not as much as a mirror. So light coming off of our phone, the text that's being written on it, is going to bounce up. Some of it is going to go right through the acrylic, and it's just gonna keep going that direction. But some of the light is gonna hit the acrylic pane and at a 45 degree angle, it's going to bounce off. And remember, this is where we are over here. So we're going to be able to see what's on the phone screen as it bounces off this way. But because of the angle, the camera isn't going to see any of that light. The phone isn't going to bounce light off the acrylic this direction. That just doesn't happen. It's only going to go either straight through the acrylic or bounce off the 45 degree angle out towards us. So a tip for you if you're ever cutting mat for something that needs to look really, really pretty, make sure that you're cutting inwards. You don't want to ever cut outwards towards the mat that you're going to be keeping. You might end up with like a, a score mark that you don't want. In this case, it doesn't really matter, but for future reference. So you cut towards the piece that isn't going to matter. So now to know what size of acrylic we need, we're going to measure the cuts we've already made. Now what we also have to take into account is how far apart we want these. And again, that depends on the phone you're using. So we'll start by just cutting a four inch wide strip of acrylic, kind of like we did with our pieces of foam core, and we'll then chop it down to the right width after. Cutting acrylic is more like scoring and breaking acrylic. You don't slice all the way through it. You cut a deep enough line that it's slightly weaker there, and then you snap it over the corner of something sharp. All right, I've run several cuts down through there, and I mean, I, I haven't even cut one quarter of the way through, but it's enough weaker that I can now take the acrylic, put it over the edge of our bench here. Very nice. And it just snaps pretty clean. So in theory, this now fits into the slot we just cut. So we want just a little bit of extra acrylic on the sides so we can adjust it as necessary. So I'm just lining it up with foam screen. Unfortunately, acrylic over time will get scratches and dust on it, unlike glass, but it is a lot easier to cut. Yeah! We don't really need any height above the top of the reflecting screen, so let's mark right there and then cut both of these posts off at that height. So if you have the tools for it and if you know how to cut glass, you could use a glass screen. It would last a little bit longer, but acrylic is very easy to cut, very easy to handle. So yeah, it's cheap. <laughs> Let's measure to put a roof onto this. And before we start gluing all the pieces together, there's one more step we want to take. We talked about how we wanted to avoid vignetting. That's when there's something on the sides that's showing up on screen and I'm simulating it by just giving myself blinders at the moment. If these are on the edge of the lens and they're too far forward, then you're gonna see them on the sides and you're not trying to record this, you just want it to be there holding stuff. So to make sure that we don't get any vignetting, any blocking of the visual, we're also gonna cut out just a little bit of a curve shape into these to try and minimize any accidental encroaching on the sides. There you go. And you normally will not see that in movies, but a really easy example, turn on your camera phone and just put your hand to the side, you'll see it. In a situation like this, less is more. Don't melt your phone. Let's measure for the 
back. Before we attach the back, however, we need to add something else. We're going to have this back attached to the lens of the camera and not just through the foam. We're gonna be using our craft foam as a collar that fits around the lens because that way it won't just be one ring around the lens, but actually a bit more of a collar. Here's a one and a half inch strip of our craft foam. Now we're just gonna measure around the lens and glue that into a circle that fits right around it. Now, there's our back piece. There you go. Now we want to trace out the same shape, the size of the foam, not just the lens, but the foam itself. That's what's gonna be glued to this piece of foam core. The really nice part about working with foam core and foam is it's usually pretty forgiving, so even if it isn't a perfect circle, it's still gonna work. Nice. There we go. Looks good. Perfection. The teleprompter box is mostly built. There's one more thing that we might want to do. We can see how nicely it fits right over that lens. Beautiful. And the last thing that we want to add on is a little bit of support because the box itself is actually quite lightweight. Once I add the phone, it's going to get a little bit heavier and it can start to droop a little bit. And aside from that, you're, you're really putting more weight on the end of the camera, which is going to make your hands tired if you're holding the camera. So we just want to add a little bit of support. On this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to have a piece that extends off of the bottom and rests up against the base of the camera. So if it does try and tip at all, it's leverage is pushing up against the bottom of the camera base. It should center the weight so it's all much easier. You can see what it looks like through the teleprompter and you can see what it looks like from the other side through the camera. There's our cameraman. Look, it's not Grant's wife. So now we want to challenge each other. So the plan here is we are both going to put something on the teleprompter for the other person and not tell them what it's going to be. And then see how it looks. Now while she does that, I want to talk a little bit about what we are seeing in that lens. You may have noticed that every letter is slightly doubled. It's like there's a, a shadow behind the letters. And that's because our acrylic has two sides that are reflecting. It's not a very thick sheet of plastic, but the letters are reflecting off of one side of the acrylic and then they're reflecting off of the back of the same side of the acrylic. So you do get a slight ghosting effect. If you're using a professional grade teleprompter, they have a few ways to get around this. One is by using a piece of glass and it will usually be a little bit thinner and it'll have a special reflective coating applied to it in just the right spots in just the right amounts so that it reflects the words nicely, but you can still see through it and you don't get that doubled ghosting effect. This, however, works pretty well for a cheap version that you can throw together, and if you have decently large text, it's not a big distraction. Good one, you are. I don't know what it is I'm about to read, but I'm gonna give it a shot. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, it is a period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil galactic empire. Nice. <laughs> There's a nice, a nice title crawl. Just scrolled right up there. <laughs> Your turn? All right. Oh, no. I gotta think of something good. Look, if you had one shot, one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted, one moment, would you capture it or just let it slip? His palms are sweaty, arms are heavy. There's vomit on his sweater already. Mom's spaghetti. He's nervous, but on the surface, he looks at calm and ready to drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud. I think we can do this. <laughs> really? I give you Star Wars? You give me Eminem? <laughs> that song won an Oscar. We went ahead and modified one of our teleprompter builds, and now we just have this nice little thing that we can drop a smartphone into and use the built-in camera on that. It's going to do the same thing. You can film through the back, stays in place, 
you can see everything that the camera sees. Thanks to my friend Brigham for sharing your experiences and what you learned as you were designing and inventing this thing. It's a really cool version. Guys, if you aren't going to be using this DIY version, if it's something you think you're gonna use a lot every day or for lots and lots of videos, it's probably worth investing in a professional grade version rather than the DIY. It's got some advantages, but this is definitely going to work if you're just gonna be using it occasionally. Hey guys, that's all for today, but you know we've always got more for you to see. If you hit that box at the top, it will take you directly to our last video. You should check that out. The other box will show you what YouTube thinks you should be watching next. And if you hit that bomb in the middle, you'll be subscribed to our channel so you never miss out on the fun. Don't forget to ring that bell, and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.